Welcome back, everyone. Today, I made my first appearance in the Pro Chess League being held on chess.com. Now, this is a very unique event. It is a team event with every team consisting of four players. And because of that, you play all the opposing players on the other team. So in the first round, you play the board four, then you play board three, board two, board one, and vice versa. Of course, if you're board four for your team, you play the board one of the opposing team. And in the last round, the board ones, board twos, board threes, and board fours all play each other. So it's evenly matched up and you have the most hype. So first round, I'm playing board four for the, for the Berlin Bears. And I'm playing against Josephine Heinemann, who is a woman's grandmaster, rating 2336 feeding. So the game starts out with E4. Now I play d6, she plays d4, and I play f5. Now, you guys have probably not seen this yet because I recorded the video a couple of days ago and I haven't released it, but I played this Balog defense a couple of times in Title Tuesday, winning some key games against Grandmaster Alexander Rustamov as well as International Master Roberto Molina. So I figured if it's good enough for Title Tuesday, I got to keep the meme dream alive, and of course, it's got such a great name that I can't not play it. So Josephine takes on f5, I play bishop takes pawn, she goes bishop d3, and now I play queen d7. Here she plays knight to f3. Now the idea is quite simple behind this development. Black wants to play knight c6 and castle the king out of center as fast as possible. So she goes knight f3, I play knight f6. Simply the point is that if I go knight c6, white can maybe play d5, kicking the knight away from the c6 square. Knight f6. She takes on f5, I take back here, she castles, and now I go knight c6. It's worth noting in both of the title Tuesday games that I mentioned before, both Roberto and Alexander played castles, knight c6, and then this move rook to e1. So Josephine trades, I take back, castles, knight to c6, and now she goes c3. Now, of course, it's very weird for me doing this because I've already recorded a video separately on the Balog, Balog opening. Um, but the one thing that I have to reiterate here is that if you're playing with the white pieces, you need to be very aggressive and go right after your opponent from the get-go. If you're not very aggressive and black is allowed to develop and push pawns on the king side, very quickly the game can turn on a dime. So Josephine plays c3, and this is a very passive move. What white should be playing for is to go c4, and if I castle, white goes d5, knight to e5, and knight to d4, and white is getting this great square for the knight on e6. This bishop on f8 is absolutely horrible with the pawns on g7 and e7. Instead, she plays c3, and now I go e5 here, and the point is that if white plays a move like d5, for example, now you simply go knight to d8, bishop e7, and castle to the king side. A sample line would be c4, bishop e7, knight c3, castles, bishop to e3, and after knight to f7, black is doing relatively well. So, instead, she takes on e5, but now I take, and with the pawn on c3, the knight on b1 is actually somewhat misplaced. White would love to have the knight on c3 to sort of cover the e4 square, but also to go to d5 or b5, but with the pawn being in the weight, now you'll have to waste the tempo and place c4 in order to bring the knight there. So after takes, she plays rookie one. I go bishop to d6, trying to castle my king out of the center of the board, either king side or queen side. Both are possible. She now plays h3 here, and now I castle. She goes queen e2, and I play e4, trying to get rid of this weak pawn that is under attack on e5, but additionally kicking this knight away from the f3 square because now I have this really nice diagonal from d6 to h2 for my dark square bishop. So here she plays knight to h2. I go knight to e5. Idea to put the knight on d3. Great outpost, targeting the pawns on b2 and f2, the rook on e1, as well as the bishop on c1. She continues with bishop to e3 here, and now I play this move knight to d3, rook to d1, and here I go h5. Now, what I should have played here, as I realized during the game, is I should have played this move knight to d5. The reason that I rejected this move is I thought she could play queen g4, trading off the queens. But if she plays queen g4, I can simply trade and take this pawn on b2. Additionally, in this position, white also has trouble developing this b1 knight and the rook on a1. If you go knight to d2, again, you hang the pawn on b2. And if you play this move knight to a3 here, for example, now black can simply snap the knight and then take the pawn on c3, forking the queen on e2 and the rook on d1. So if I had played knight d5, I would have been doing very, very well. But sort of just going with the flow, knowing that I was already winning this game, I play this move h5. And now she plays this move knight to a3. Now, this is not necessarily a great move by any stretch, but it does help white start to finish the development here. Because now if I trade on a3, white has an open file for the rook. And I no longer have knight takes c3, winning the queen or the rook. That being said, black still remains significantly better, but it's not super easy to prove. So instead, I play g5 here, and the reasoning behind this move is I just want to keep attacking on the king side. Why do I want to sort of make it complicated or go for something that isn't necessarily the quickest route to a victory? So she plays knight to c4 here, bringing the knight into the game. And now in this position, I play bishop takes h2. Now, this move is not necessarily bad per se, but after takes takes... 
I felt like I maybe had something better like Knight G4 here or something along these lines. I also felt like after Knight C4, maybe I could have just played G4 right away. And it's a little bit different because if White trades and goes H4, now I can stack the two rooks on the D file. So I felt like this has to be pretty good for me, but it's sort of, I was on autopilot. I'm just making these moves very quickly. So I take on H2, she takes back and now I go G4. She plays H4 only move. Of course, if white trades the pawns, this is pretty much suicide. Cause after takes King G1, Queen H5, you're getting checkmated in one on H1, just a total, total disaster. And it's game over. If white doesn't take, you play a move like rook d2 and we swap on h3. Now I just can just go rook g8. And with the open g file, the weak king on h2, this also should be very, very straightforward. So she goes to h4 here. And at least now there isn't an instant win on the spot. Here I play knight d5, which is completely fine. Although I should have played g3. Because after takes and knight g4, I had these really, really nice knights that are outposted on both g4 and d3. And long term, this should be winning. Instead, I play knight d5, feeling like I can pretty much do anything. I can walk on water and just slowly win the game. So here, Josephine plays king g1. I go a6 here. A quiet move that's completely unnecessary. Uh, bishop takes a7 is not really a big threat here. So playing a6 is simply wasting time. Nonetheless, I decide to play it anyway. So after a6, she goes rook d2. A good move, trying to bring her last undeveloped piece into the game by going rook d1. I play rook g8. She goes rook d1. And here I play this horrible move pawn to g3 now this move was simply based on a miscalculation when i played this move i thought well white has to take because if white goes f3 i go queen f6 queen h4 and checkmate in one but as i realized there is a wrinkle to this so when i played g3 i thought okay f3 loses f takes g3 rook takes g3 these knights are really powerful i can stack the rook on the g file complete disaster for white right has to be a disaster unfortunately as I realized during the game, white can play this move f3. And now to my horror, and I thought for a while here after queen f6, white has this move bishop g5 in between and the game gets complicated. Now, after a long think here, I decided to play it anyway. And the reason I played it was sort of twofold. First of all, I thought that it was winning anyway. But secondly, I didn't see a force went on the spot um, where I even maintained advantage. I saw lines like knight f4, for example, and after takes, takes rook d8, rook d8, king d8, rook d8, king d8, queen takes e4. I can play queen f6 here. And the position is fine. I mean, white has queen d4 check or even knight e3 with knight f1. But I felt that when I was calculating this during the game, the chances of me winning are fairly limited. So once I realized that, I thought, you know what? After f3, I'm just going to play queen f6, try to checkmate here, and hopefully it works out. Hopefully everything works out. Unfortunately, it does not work out. Because when I play queen f6, the big issue with this move is that for someone who's around 2300, one of the things you want to do, since they're a little bit weaker, is give them chances to go wrong where there are multiple options. It's like multi-choice test. You want them to have multiple chances to make a mistake and go wrong, as opposed to there being really only one single move that they can play, which doesn't lose the game. So the reason that queen f6 is such a terrible move is that bishop g5 is the only move. If white takes on e4, after queen takes h4, queen takes d3, black can now go rook df8, and the king is simply getting checkmated on h2 here. White can try to survive with a move like bishop f2, but after queen h2, king f1, queen h1 check, king e2, rook takes f2 is quite simply checkmate. King has no squares. So in this position, white's only move is to play bishop g5, which of course Josephine finds. I play rook takes bishop, she takes the rook, I take back, and now again, the only move is queen takes pawn, because if you take with the pawn on e4 here, after knight 5, f4, queen to f3, queen to h4, white is again getting checkmated on the h2 and h1 squares. One sample line would be rook takes knight, queen to h2 check, king to f1, and now queen to h1 checkmate, because the king cannot go anywhere. So this is just game over. But of course, queen takes e4 is the only move here that stops this whole idea with queen h4, so she plays it. Now, I had calculated this, and I was originally going to play knight 5 f4, but after knight 5 f4, I realized she could play knight e3. Now, I should have done this anyway, because when I move the other knight to f4, knight e3 becomes a much more obvious move from the standpoint that it puts pressure on the knight on d5, and additionally, you have this f1 square for the knight to retreat to. So... If I was really, really serious about trying to find a swindle opportunity or keep the game going, I should have put this knight here because after knight to e3, I can at least try to pretend with something like h4, rook d3, takes, 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 and king b8. And yes, I'm down a knight here for basically nothing. But with these advanced pawns, there are some chances for some swindles down the road. But alas, I did not do that. Instead, I played this move queen to h4, hoping to create the checkmate on h2. And here again, Josephine finds the only move that does not lose the game, which is this move knight to f1, because it stops queen to h2 check. Now, 
if my rook were pretty much on any other square here say my rook is on h8 in this position for example i'm still losing the game but after a move like c6 it's not over because i can move the knight away i can play like rook e8 down the road and there are some chances to win the game and in fact i think if i had a position along these lines i think i still would have won the game from this position but the problem is after knight to f1 with this rook on d8 i cannot move the knight from d5 if in this position i play like knight b6 after rook takes rook I have to give up the queen and of course this is just obviously winning for white and so i can't move the knight but if i push my pawn to c6 for example white can just go c4 here like in the game and now again i can't move the knight because of this pin if i move the rook i just lose the knight and actually to add insult to injury if i play a quiet move like rook d7 hoping to go rook to e7 here white can play rook takes rook rook takes knight rook takes rook rook takes rook and i just lose knight e2 doesn't work because the queen covers the square if i take the rook for example i lose my queen so i'm just down an entire rook here and that's all she wrote i lose the game so i play c6 here josephine plays c4 correctly i go rook d7 she takes on d5 and here i play rook e7 sort of out of desperation i can obviously play rook takes pawn but after takes takes and just queen e5 again the e2 square is covered the h2 square is covered and white is simply winning so I play rook e7 she goes queen to f5 check king b8 and correctly she takes the pawn after a move like d6 white is still winning but there are some small glimmers of hope with a move like rook e2 and maybe she'll panic here and make a blunder but when white just takes on c6 here I simply can't do that because if I go rook to e2 right here white has many ways to win but probably simplest is c7 king takes pawn queen c5 check king to b8 and now rook to d8 check king has no squares I have to play queen d8 rook takes d8 and it's checkmate so I can't go rookie two I mean I could just resign here obviously instead I play knight e2 she takes a knight I take back again hoping for some kind of weird miracle some mouse slip you know panicking with little time on the clock but Josephine to her credit does not slip at all she plays queen f8 check I go king c7 and she plays queen d6 here I go king to b6 if I play king c8 in this position queen d7 check king b8 queen takes b7 is simply checkmate so I go king b6 she plays c7 checking the king king cannot capture the pawn as the queen guards it I go king a7 here she plays c8 and with two queens on the board I resign so I end up losing this first game against a 2300 in the pro chess league now we did go on to win this match the game was not super relevant nonetheless Josephine played very well she found a couple of only moves you have to give a lot of credit where credit is due she found these important moves um, all the way back here she found f3 very good move she found bishop g5 the best move found queen e4 and most importantly she found this concept of knight to e3 and knight to f1 stopping the checkmate on a2 which helped her win this game so obviously for Josephine it's a very big result I have not seen the reactions but I know she was sort of shocked that she won this game but she found a couple of very good moves and she won this game in a very deserved fashion for me on the other hand obviously I wasn't super thrilled at the time to lose this game um, I would say that I was a little bit too casual I thought I was going to win no matter what I did and then I played this queen f6 move which was insane because I was still trying to keep the meme dream alive but at the end of the day you guys sometimes you have to be serious you cannot meme forever because when you do that bad things happen so again I end up losing this game to Josephine it's been quite a long time since I lost to a 2300 on chess.com but I lose the game at any rate the team picked me up we won the second match by a big score of three and a half to half I would win my three other games two games against the Savane brothers and then I also won a game against Dimitri Kolars as well so New York New York Knights uh we did with the New York sorry the New York not New York sorry the Gotham Knights we win our match against Berlin Bears I think by a score of if I'm not mistaken I think it was um I think it was eight and a half to six and a half if I'm not mistaken and I scored three points out of four I win all three other games so all is well that ends well I create the content I also help my team win the match by winning the other three games and most importantly Josephine has a great victory she'll definitely be very happy about this game for a long time to come so all the credit in the world goes to her and everyone's happy at the end of the day so on that note I hope you guys have enjoyed this recap I am doing this right after the game has ended and we've won the match uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button below if you haven't already and I will be back very soon with more YouTube only content see you guys bye